The United States is sending over more U.S. troops to the Middle East, prompting Israel to delay their ground invasion of the Gaza Strip yet again. The Israeli Air Force has been bombing hundreds of Hamas terror targets inside of Gaza in preparation for that ground invasion. On Friday, two American hostages were released by Hamas in a PR stunt that was meant to make them look semi-human. Stay tuned for an unbelievable miracle story I just got here in Israel from an IDF soldier who was sent to fight the terrorists near the Gaza border on one of the first days of the war. You definitely don't want to miss that amazing story there. And good news, the terrorist propaganda, quote, news channel, Al Jazeera, is about to be shut down here in Israel. I'm Josiah, and this is The Israel Guys. Giants organization is flying 10 American flags and 10 empty seats today to represent the 10 Americans still unaccounted for since the October 7th attacks by Hamas in Israel. Well, there you go. In a rare win for the New York Giants on Sunday night, they flew 10 American flags and 10 empty seats in the MetLife Stadium in honor of the 10 American hostages who are currently being held by Hamas in Gaza. It's great to see that support there in the United States of America. Obviously, there are American hostages, but there are hundreds of Israelis that are also being held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip as well. The IDF just yesterday raised the number of hostages, confirmed hostages being held in, in Gaza. The number is increasing to, they raised the number to 222. So please continue to pray for those being held hostage and to advocate for uh, your government and to pressure Hamas to release those hostages. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's program. We're talking about everything that's happening here in the land of Israel from an on-the-ground source. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated. It also helps us get this news, uh, this, this breaking uh, factual news out to more people on the internet, especially in the days of big tech and censorship. Last week, we had our Instagram account randomly just shut down. Uh, didn't really give us any reason, just said we violated their policies. Um, we made a bit of a fuss with some, uh, with some uh, people we know in the United States, and they restored our account with a uh, sort of apology. Didn't exactly tell us why they shut it down. But all that is to say that especially pro-Israel channels are being censored and watched on the internet by big tech and uh, so if you guys could subscribe and hit that thumbs up, that'll be uh, a little bit of your part to fight back against those who are trying to censor the truth when it comes to Israel. Guys, you can also join our breaking news Telegram channel. The link is in the description below. We'll be sending out updates and videos, these programs, and also our other uh, updates on that Telegram channel as well. You can also follow us on all our social media, follow us on Instagram uh, so we can uh, show them that there are a lot of people who actually support Israel and want to keep updated with what is happening here in the beautiful land of Israel. All right, guys, uh, what's going on in Israel? What has happened over the weekend? Trying to give you an update because uh, even though we're getting further and further from this horrible massacre and tragedy on October 7th, Israel is still in a war, and by the looks of things, it's not going to end anytime soon, and things are definitely, definitely heating up. Stay tuned for more info on that on today's program. Uh, first off, on Friday, two of the hostages who were taken by Hamas were actually released uh, by Hamas from Gaza. They were released through the Egypt-Gaza crossing and then soon after brought into Israel and reunited with family members here. The two hostages who were released were Judith and Natalie Ra'anan, who were actually dual American and Israeli citizens. They actually live in the United States in the Chicago area, but were here in Israel visiting family down in the South for the holidays when this Hamas attack happened and obviously were kidnapped and taken hostage down in Gaza. Now, uh, it's absolutely incredible, and we are so thankful that these two um, hostages were released from the Strip. Uh, that is two lives saved in this instance out of the now 222 who are still being held um, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, but guys, do not be fooled by this. It definitely, definitely was a PR stunt by Hamas to try to make themselves look better in the eyes of the media and try to make themselves look a little bit more human, uh, you can say, which we know they are not. If you, if unless uh, you have already forgotten the horrific images and videos that came out 
on the, after the massacre on October 7th in the days that follow. Guys, do not be fooled. They're trying to make themselves look good. They're trying to get international support for their cause, um, which as we saw, is to brutally murder, torture, and kill uh, Jews in Israel and then taking all these hostages. Guys, Hamas is ISIS, and do not forget that, guys. We cannot uh, move uh, away from this, this focus of taking out this evil and rooting out this evil from the Gaza Strip. Um, and, and ultimately, this is not just for the good of Israel. This is the, for the good of the world. All right, guys, what is going on with Israel's ground assault in Gaza? And as we've uh, been talking about, Israel is going to go in any day. Um, and yet every day the, the, uh, the ground in advancement gets delayed. And obviously there's many more reasons that we don't know that are uh, very good military, uh, military reasons, security reasons that they're delaying. Um, a report came out this morning from Channel 7 News here in Israel, uh, which kind of shed, may shed a little bit of light on what is actually happening and why this delay is taking so long that they're still preparing for the entrance uh, into Gaza to root out Hamas. This is from Channel 7 News. It says, the U.S. has informed Israel that it intends to send additional American forces to the Middle East ahead of the expected ground incursion due to concerns that Iranian attacks against U.S. forces in the area will increase. According to assessments, Israel has agreed to delay the ground incursion until additional U.S. forces are sent. It, is, it was also reported that Israeli sources have clarified that this is not the only reason for the delay. Among the other reasons are increasing, uh, are increasing the forces' operational preparedness in an attempt to do so as much as possible, including potentially prisoner swaps to free the hostages prior to a ground incursion. And that's from Channel 7 News here in Israel. So there's a lot of, obviously, there's many more reasons that, than that, I'm sure. But as of now, the IDF is not backed down from their plan to go in and root out this evil regime um, of Hamas inside the Gaza Strip, which is fantastic because every day that passes, the fear increases among, uh, among many that uh, due to international pressure that maybe the IDF will eventually back down, which is not what needs to happen uh, after the horrific attack on October 7th. We know this will happen again if this evil is not stopped today. They will continue to, to per 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 perpetrate many more attacks and many more civilian and Israeli Jewish lives will be lost. Um, talking about prisoner swaps and as uh, horrible as that is because uh, Israel has previously done pr prisoner swaps to get their hostages out from the Gaza Strip. Um, they've, they've previously swapped uh, hundreds of terrorists for one person. Um, there's been, you know, very out of proportion. You want to talk about disproportionate, uh, <laughs> disproportionate swaps for Israel really goes to show how much Israel values human life, but swapping one Israeli civilian back into Israel for Israel to release hundreds of terrorists back into the Gaza Strip. Now, this sounds like a horrible idea when you're trying to get people out to release many more terrorists that could go and kill people. Uh, but I just kind of, uh, as I was looking at this, uh, this uh, report this morning, realized that maybe if they uh, release all these terrorists back into the Gaza Strip, then Israel goes in with their ground forces, maybe that'll take care of the problem right there. I don't know. Don't know what the best option here. I'm not saying I have the best policy on prisoner swaps or getting these hostages freed, but uh, we definitely want to see these people come out of this alive. These All these 222 hostages make it out of the Gaza Strip alive, and uh, that is what we are all hoping and praying for. Also, the uh, IDF is conducting hundreds of more of airstrikes on Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Hamas targets, terror ta targets, the Sheen Bet and Israel's uh, IDF, the IDF's intelligence services published that targets, that they're, the places they're targeting with these airstrikes include mortar launchers, anti-tank positions, as well as they're targeting terror tunnels when they're operating um, underground and Hamas operational co command posts. Um, so these IDF strikes are not random. They're not going in and striking hospitals. Uh, BBC and New York Times especially, I'm talking to you. Uh, make sure and verify your facts before you, you just report whatever Hamas says. Um, and uh, the IDF is very, very pinpointed when they're going in and striking places in the Gaza Strip. They're not targeting civilians, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, that in a second. But uh, the IDF published photos that actually prove why there are civilians that are actually being killed in the Gaza Strip in these airstrikes. Uh, they published these photos. I want to show some of these images here. Um, rocket launching sites right next to schools, 
right next to kindergartens. Um, right next to a mosque. They have rocket launching sites and even terror tunnels that run underneath and right next to exploiting these children's lives and exploiting these civilians to use for their disgusting uh, propaganda purposes. Hamas is, uh, these tactics really are just horrific and they, they to any um, sane uh, civil person, this stuff is, is horrible, horrific, disgusting that they would use civilians and children, purposely put them in harm's way, use them as human shields to shoot their rockets onto Israeli civilians. And then when Israel strikes that position where they're la launching rockets from, they blame Israel and say Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. The worst part about it is that the world believes them. The world believes Hamas more than they believe Israel. And uh, every day we get further away from what happened on October 7th. The, the, the world sentiment is slowly shifting back to their anti-Israel uh, stance and supporting Hamas more and more. So guys, don't be confused. Don't be... Uh, don't be uh, uh, messed up by these images and your mind uh, be twisted back to this anti-Israel stance, this anti-Israel rhetoric that the media has been pushing for decades. But remember, guys, this is what has actually happened. These are the facts of the ground. These are the images. What is happening? Uh, why these civilians are being, are being hit in the Gaza Strip. And, and the IDF has been uh, warning these guys to get out, warning civilians, dropping leaflets, sending messages Get out. We're striking this place because there, there's terror uh, activity here. We're going to strike it. And then Hamas, obviously, um, we know that they have been holding those people back and trying to make it so civilians actually get hit. Guys, I want to read a uh, story that is actually sent uh, to me here in Israel from a friend here in Israel. It was a miracle story from one of these soldiers who was went down to the Gaza border and fought in one of these communities that was taken over by terrorists. Incredible story here, and I received this um, from a friend here in Israel. It goes uh, like this. It's been a couple of weeks, but I have some time now, and I want to write about a Ness. A Ness is a miracle. Uh, that happened to me during those fierce, first few days of hell. My unit was called in on Shabbat morning. No Tzav 8, no Ishorim, no official order, nothing. Our brigade commander saw that the South needed a battalion to respond ASAP, and he told us to come. Four hours later, we got on Humvees and headed straight to Kafar Aza, one of the communities down by Gaza. Our weapons had been handed to us on the spot. We had never shot them, didn't even have time to clean them. We had no idea if they worked, and the sites definitely were not zeroed in. The weapons in the reserve units are notorious for being unreliable and usually don't even shoot properly before a good clean or in some cases a visit to the armory. That's how we went into combat. Combat, excuse me. We walked into the yeshuv, the uh, the community, and were engaged by terrorists within the first few minutes of walking. A few minutes later, we encountered one hiding in a bush with an AK-47 waiting to ambush us. My w rifle worked perfectly, firing every shot, cycling every round, hitting what I was aiming at, not one single jam. I thanked Hashem for giving me a rifle that worked right off the bat. After three days of fighting, I had, to, had learned to rely on my rifle completely. On Tuesday night, we finished clearing Kfar Aza, were switched out by another battalion, and were sent up to a base so we could rest, shower, and finally clean and check our weapons. We went to the range. Immediately, I got a jam, another round, another jam, and another. They were getting worse. I had to start taking out my pliers on my utility knife to clear them. We ended up having to take it to the armory so they could switch out all the internal parts to basically rebuild it from the inside. Guys, the gun just didn't work. It was a broken rifle. It was broken from the moment it was handed to me on Shabbat morning, but for me in those few days in Kafar Aza, it had worked to perfection so we could do what we needed to do. I heard similar stories from many other soldiers in our battalion. I can look forward to the day where I can stand in my shul, in my synagogue, on Shabbat and recite Birkat Gomel for this miracle and the countless others that Hashem has performed for us. I thought that story was incredible. One of the soldiers who was illustrating that miraculously his gun, he was given a broken gun to go in and fight uh, these terrorists because it was so last minute, they didn't have time to prepare. Uh, and this gun worked perfectly. He, he was able to take out many, many terrorists and save many, many Jewish lives. And then he took it to the range 
and it was indeed a broken gun. Guys, stories like this are coming out all over from uh, soldiers and civilians who fought against these guys in the early, uh, the first couple days. Um, and these guys were fighting for three days in these communities, fighting these terrorists to root them out. Can't imagine what that was like. But guys, uh, miracle stories like this are incredible. We thank God for preserving life and for making these weapons work well so that these soldiers could go in and take care of business. All right, guys. Uh, Last good news for the day. Uh, Got to close out the show here in a few minutes. But uh, Al Jazeera, and uh, we kind of like to call them our arch nemesis here because uh, they're the anti, the biggest anti-Israel propaganda. Really, what they are is a propaganda news channel. Here it is. They're Qatar funded by the Qatar government. Um, they are now about to be shut down. It looks like here in the in in Israel, due to national security threats from Al Jazeera. Israel's government actually approved regulations that would allow Israel to shut down the Al Jazeera network. Why? Um, according to the communications minister, Shlomo Kari, who led the charge to pass these regulations, Al Jazeera has damaged national security since the war began, doing things like, what are they doing? The reporting on where IDF troops are positioned, uh, where IDF movements are going on the Gaza border, and I believe other places in Israel. And actually, some of the intelligence agencies have also put out complaints to the government saying they need to shut Al Jazeera down because it's becoming a national security threat. Um, according to Karhi's office, a proposal to shut down Al Jazeera will be brought to the next meeting of the security cabinet, which must uh, approve that request. So hopefully that request gets approved uh, because not just the national security threat of, of reporting on IDF positions and things like that, which is the no-brainer uh, reason for going, going ahead and shutting the, uh, Al Jazeera down. Al Jazeera has basically been a pro-terror, pro-Hamas um, just anti-Israel propaganda channel for so long, and it's actually causing great harm to the state of Israel um, in the name, all in the name of you know news reporting, journalism, and free speech. They constantly spew out lies, and unfortunately, they have millions and millions, uh, hundreds of millions of followers and people that watch uh, that information coming out from that channel. So good news, hopefully they're gonna be shut down and taken down very, very soon. Uh, right before we close, guys, a report actually just came in. This is from the Jerusalem Post, kind of realizing the gravity of the situation and, and that things are continuing to heat up here in the land of Israel with this war and what's going. Uh, from the Jerusalem Post, Fadavi, who is the deputy commander of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard, said that, quote, if it is necessary and if the order is get, given, idea, Iran, excuse me, will strike Israel's northern city, talking about Haifa, without hesitation. Guys, this is big because Iran is now directly threatening Israel that they will strike directly from Iran if necessary and if the order is given. Not just the Hezbollah threat, which is right on Israel's northern border with hundreds of thousands of rockets pointed at Israel's population centers, but now Iran is themselves, which we know they're funding Hezbollah and they're also funding Hamas and backing them militarily, but now the Iran Revolutionary Guard is threatening the state of Israel directly. Guys, we need to now more than ever stand with the land of Israel, stand with the nation of Israel. Now is the time to pray uh, for Israel. Guys, I'm gonna put it bluntly. Israel is in a war for her survival. And um, this is the time where if you were ever a pro-Israel Zionist, if you, if you ever called yourself pro-Israel, if you ever called yourself a Zionist, now is the time to really put action to those words. We can't just say um, we're, uh, we're, we support Israel and we pray for Israel. Yes, all that is good, but no, now is the time we need to stand up and support the nation of, of Israel. And I'm, for most of you that are watching this show, for most of you Christians, uh, the Christian Zionists around the world who support Israel, right now support for Israel looks like giving monetarily, giving funds to help Israel protect herself. And that's why I am unashamedly gonna say you should give money and help us raise $29 million for Operation Itai here in the land of Israel. We are airlifting emergency supplies to the farms and communities here in Judea and Samaria in the quote unquote West Bank to help these communities defend themselves against Israel's enemy. Many of these communities are vulnerable and there's a lot of Arab towns that surround these places and they need things like protective vests. They need things like protective helmets. They need things like thermal drones and night vision goggles, flashlights, 
uh, trauma kits, medical gear, all this kind of stuff. And that's what we're doing here with Operation Itai, raising $29 million to bring those supplies, airlift those supplies. We have airplanes lined up to bring those supplies here to the land of Israel. We just need you to help fund those emergency supplies. Guys, encourage you, open your wallets, give generously to this campaign because I know uh, I, normally, you know, it would be, uh, I would say, you know, explore all the options and find the best person to give to that's helping the war effort. Guys, there's a lot of good organizations that are helping raise money for Israel right now. But I can say with certainty, I know where these supplies are going. And I know that all these supplies are going to very, very much needed places. And uh, I encourage you guys to open uh, open your wallets and, and really put your faith, uh, put your money right where your mouth is. If you support Israel, support Operation Itai and help us raise this money for the communities of Judea and Samaria. I'm not asking you to give money to us. I'm asking you to give money to the nation of Israel and for their security. Guys, you can do that. Go to operationitai.com or just click the link down in the description below. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and get that conversation going down in the comments below. As always, remember, tune out the fake news, tune out Al Jazeera, tune out the BBC and the New York Times and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. Be strong and courageous. And remember, we'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.